So I will be talking about control algorithms that operate by repeatedly sampling the state, solving an optimal control problem, and applying the optimal control until the next sample. There are a number of advantages to MPC, and the theory is uh, well established in discrete time and somewhat well developed in the continuous time. What we noticed is a severe lack of theory for systems with hybrid dynamics, where the state can evolve continuously as well as discreetly, and that's where our work comes in. My talk is divided into two sections. In the first part, I'll go over some of the background material, in particular an MPC framework for hybrid systems we developed in the last two years. Then I will connect this to the current work in the second part. Before we move forward, let me note that the word hybrid refers to a variety of things in the MPC literature. For example, it refers to discontinuities in the right-hand side of the uh, plant dynamics, or it refers to systems where the state can be partitioned as continuous valued and discrete valued. But in general, these systems are not necessarily a combination of continuous and discrete dynamics. In fact, most of these are in essence discrete time systems, uh, and some can be viewed as discretization of truly hybrid systems. Uh, however, discretization is tricky for various applications of hybrid nature, like mechanical systems with impacts and switch circuits, switching circuits due to Zeno solutions. For truly hybrid systems, the only contributions we know of are listed in these references, but please let us know if there are any that we may have missed. That all said, what we've done so far is to come up with an MPC framework with guaranteed feasibility and feasibility and stability properties. We do this while allowing Zeno behavior and without discretizing the continuous time or partitioning this state. So at the end of the day, it is applicable to a wide variety of hybrid modeling paradigms. Okay, so now I'll try to summarize the prior sufficient conditions we had developed and afterwards talk about how we can relax some of these for systems with solutions that persistently jump. In other words, have infinitely many discrete transitions or persistently flow i.e. the duration of continuous time behavior is infinite. The way we model hybrid dynamics in our work is through a simple combination of continuous trajectories with discrete trajectories. When do we allow each behavior and how? The when comes from two constraint sets, one allowing continuous trajectories and the other discrete. And the how comes from a differential equation and difference equation. We call this the hybrid equations framework, and since we assume uniqueness for MPC, we work primarily with equations, but we do have generalizations to inclusions as well. The continuous evolution is shortly referred to as flows and the discrete evolution as jumps, and we parameterize solutions by two independent variables, keeping track of both the duration of flows and number of jumps. Of course, you cannot pick an arbitrary tj and ask what x of tj is. Every solution comes with its own domain, but it takes the general structure of a disjoint union where TJs are the jump times and note the non-strict inequality. So we do allow consecutive jumps. And this is a fairly general framework encapsulating many existing models like hybrid automata or switch systems. The MPC framework that we have developed for hybrid equations operates by minimizing the following cost functional and applying the optimal control until the next sample. So recall the structure of solutions and their domains. Essentially, we are weighting the state and input during flows using the so-called flow cost LC, during jumps using the jump cost LD, and we also assign a cost to the terminal condition. We already have implicit constraints given by the flow and jump sets. So x u should belong to the flow set during flows and jump set during jumps. Two additional constraints, the terminal time should belong to a set called the prediction horizon, and I'll elaborate on this next. And the terminal condition should belong to a terminal constraint set x. So why a prediction horizon? Why a set called a prediction horizon and why, why don't we fix the terminal time tj? I'll explain that with an example. And to do that, let me first clarify the notion of asymptotic stability for hybrid equations. Say that you have a closed loop system and would like to asymptotically stabilize a closed set A. For that, you want that solution starting close to A stay close to A in the usual sense. And you also want solutions to converge to A as T plus J tends to infinity. With that definition, let's look at the prototypical bouncing ball model. When the ball is in the air, it is subject to Newton's laws. 
So here, gamma is the gravitational acceleration. And once it hits the ground with non-positive velocity, there's a reduction in speed due to the coefficient of restitution lambda, uh, to, which is typically less than one, and also a change in the direction of travel. To this model, we also add a positive input term u, and you can think of this as a moving platform hitting the ball to increase its speed. So what happens if you uh, try to stabilize the origin using MPC with a fixed time horizon? Well, for asymptotic stability, you need forward invariance of the origin, so you need to be able to find an optimal control from there. However, flows are not possible from the origin since gravity points downwards. That means that t must be zero, so only jumping trajectories are predicted. The catch is that if you perturb your initial conditions a little bit and you have positive height or velocity, you no longer have solutions that jump which means that the optimal control problem is not solvable near the origin unless you set j is equal to zero, and that is a pathological scenario. You have no prediction. The problem with the bouncing ball example is that solutions have drastically different domains from nearby initial conditions. To take care of this, you can select the horizon to have a rectangular structure or perhaps a structure that looks like this. What you may have noticed is that these two structures resemble uh, reverse, so to speak, hybrid time domains, and that is one of our main assumptions. We choose the horizon to have a reverse hybrid time domain structure so as to maximize feasibility properties of the closed loop. And that's a distinguishing feature when compared to continuous time or discrete time MPC. Once you do that, you can certify stability under the MPC strategy using the value function, i.e. the smallest cost achievable from any initial condition. Here, uh, this denotes the set of solution pairs with initial condition x0. So to do that, you need to verify recursive feasibility, which means that if you move along the optimal uh, trajectory and resample to solve the optimal control problem again, you should be able to do that. In other words, the feasible set should be forward invariant under the MPC scheme. On top of that, you need to show that the value function is positive definite with respect to A, which we characterize using the distance to A and class K infinity functions, and it is decreasing along optimal trajectories. The stabilizing aspect of the MPC scheme comes from the consideration of two local feedback controllers, which render the terminal constraint set forward invariant for the resulting closed loop and also satisfy these inequalities. And you may recognize this as the typical CLF assumption in the literature adapted to the, uh, adapted to the hybrid case. And the relevant notions in the hybrid setting can be found in these references. The CLF works in the manner you would expect. The feedback guarantees the existence of feasible solutions from the terminal constraint set. And also it guarantees recursive feasibility. Say you're moving along an optimal trajectory and after some time, you would like to resolve the optimal control problem. Are you still at a feasible point? Yes, and you can see that by taking the tail of the trajectory you discarded and extending that using the forward invariance property of the assumption by flows or jumps. In addition, using the CLF inequalities, you can show that the value function is upper bounded by the terminal cost. You simply take a suboptimal solution pair generated by the local controllers plug in the inequalities and you're left with summation terms that essentially cancel each other out. The CLF assumption is also used to evaluate the change in the value function along optimal trajectories. So if you denote by L the running cost, the inequality one that proves says that the cost at time tj is less than the initial cost minus the running cost incurred so far. Again, you extend optimal solutions and calculate the new cost from TJ onwards by adding the total cost of the CLF part and subtracting the running cost until TJ and the prior terminal cost. And this term is actually non-positive. We just proved that so you can remove it. Now, to make sure that the inequalities that we came up with lead to J star being a Lyapunov -no function, we can impose some basic positive definiteness properties. The first two make sure that the value function is decreasing due to the previous result, and this one ensures that it is upper bounded by a k infinity function since j star is less than v. So these are pretty standard assumptions. Another condition we impose is that the target set A should have a neighborhood such that if we project that neighborhood to the state space, 
we should be in the terminal constraint set. So that's weaker than the typical assumption where A is usually the origin and the state constraints contain a neighborhood of the origin. Uh, that's restrictive for the hybrid case since A can often lie on the boundary, think the bouncing ball. And the final assumption is that the flow map should be bounded by a continuous function so that essentially you have finite actuation and can rule out infinitely fast convergence to the target set A. This one looks a bit esoteric, but it holds under standard regularity assumptions. Now, if you can satisfy these assumptions, good things will happen. One example is that for the bouncing ball, you can stabilize limit cycles defined by the level sets of the total energy function. And you do that by deriving cost functions from the energy function W. However, satisfying the CLF uh, requires CLF inequalities is not straightforward. The design is quite involved and we want to simplify it. The main idea is as follows. Basically, for the non-actuated case, you can verify stability of the origin using persistent of jumps. To do that, again, use the energy function, which is constant during flows due to conservation of energy, but decreases with each jump when lambda is less than one. Uh, so as the number of jumps go to infinity, the energy tends to zero. And there you have it, a quite natural and intuitive way of checking stability. This is actually not specific to the bouncing ball. If you have a closed loop system that has persistent flows, you can certify asymptotic stability as long as your Lyapunov function is decreasing during flows and not increasing during jumps. And for persistent jumps, it is the opposite situation. We wanna take this idea and apply it to hybrid MPC. So before we insisted on both V dot and delta V to be negative definite, now we will allow one to be potentially semi-definite provided we have persistence. So if we have persistence of flows, then we will not insist on this inequality. And if persistence of jumps, then we won't insist on this one. Which means that in theory, if you have persistent flows, you can select your jump cost to be zero. And for persistent jumps, the flow cost to be zero. And this simplifies both the design of your cost function and reduces uh, com computational burden of the minimization. To formalize things, we will keep two of our basic assumptions from before. For persistent flows, we will also insist that the flow cost is positive definite. The price to pay is that we need to rule out finite time convergence via jumps. Otherwise, if we can jump from outside of A to A and the jump cost is zero, we have effectively destroyed positive definiteness of the value function and the same story for persistent jumps. You can formalize these requirements as properties of optimal solution pairs. Uh, hard to do that when knowledge of optimal solution pairs are not always, uh, it's, it's not always available. So instead we use a Lyapunov-like function, uh, V tilde for flows, and make sure that if it tends to zero, convergence is not faster than exponential. For persistent jumps, we want a similar inequality to hold for some time interval. Again, we bypass knowledge of optimal solution pairs by using one of our main assumptions from before, the finite actuation one, and combine that with a property of the jump map, essentially saying that it should not allow deadbeat convergence. Okay, so back to the bouncing ball with this new perspective. We redesigned the cost functions using these new results, and lo and behold, the closed loop response is actually the same. So originally, we had designed our cost functions using a parameter theta, which made things a bit intractable and messy. The jump cost is even more involved and complicated, so I haven't included it here. But the moral of the story is that with the new results, we can just get rid of that parameter, take the flow cost as zero, and for the terminal cost, we also have a much natural design. The set we wanted to stabilize was the gamma H level set of the total energy, so we simply take V as a square of W minus gamma H. To summarize, we had a general MPC framework with guaranteed stability for hybrid systems. Uh, in this paper, we show that some of the cost functions can be semi-definite when we have persistent flows or jumps. Currently, we're looking at ways to relax the structure of the horizon under persistence of jumps or flows, but our main focus is on numerics. We have presented the discretized version of these results at the CDC, and we're also looking at numerical solutions to the optimal control problem. We also had our workshops at the CDC, which we're following with up uh, with another one at the World Congress. It'll be fully virtual and we'd be happy to see, have you there. Thank you for your attention. Happy to answer any questions.